The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, O man that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in split in this trip. Being equipped under the privacy of our priesthood by the confession of our sins. In the divine energy and in the divine health communicate the divine word of the Lord, not according to the wisdom of this world, but according to the wisdom of the grace of Christ upon us. So that when we are surviving in this church age at the present era of time, we could uphold the word of the Lord to the maximum glory of Christ, not forsaking any of those things which our Lord has given for us. As he told to the Edomites, while they were going through the land, for Israelites, not even a food, I'm going to give to you the land of peace. Because I've already given it to Esau. The same process today which is happening for us, when Lord is not able to give up one foot of a plea, of a land, then how much more it would be for us today to understand this great truth? How can we live the glory of God on this earth to Sadha? The church being a ground and pillar of truth, every believer being crowned with glory and honor, every believer being called to show forth the praises of Jehovah, every believer has been given to be a temple in the pillar in the temple of God, every believer being called to give, to sit in the throne of Christ with Him, then who are we and why are we living out this great reality of the world? And why are we considering that which is not at all true and fair on this earth? Why we want to show forth the vain glory, vain show, and not to look upon the true word of Lord which has been given for us? The prayer of Apostle Paul in Philippians or Colossians teaches to us that they have to grow up more and more in the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that they could be absolutely worthy to the calling wherewith Lord has called. So that they could really well please our, our Lord in this church age with the teachings of Christ. But we are not able to understand this great purpose which our Lord has chosen us in this church age. We are rather encouraging those things in the pulpits which is not at all fair. Because these men have lost to look. If there is any pastor teacher who doesn't teach to you the isagogical, catechetical and exegetical expression of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensation, then dear brother and take it granted that person is not from God. If he doesn't teach to you proper exegesis, that person has been deceiving you, he's been enticed, enticed by the lustful patterns of the old sin nature and is deceiving you and cheating you. But you are called not for this, you are being called to the greater glory of Jehovah in a day-by-day -day process of edification complex of the soul. Daniel's comeliness, if not the adoration, came to corruption when he could see the great vision of God. And he was out of his strength, he couldn't stand, until unless that strength was given to make him to stand upon his knees and upon bend upon his arms. So is the great glory of Jehovah, dear brother. We are not here to stand according to our own adoration. We are not here to do according to XYZ methods. But we are here purely for one simple reason, dear brother, and you believe it or not. To stand in the divine energy of Lord, to teach those things which our Lord God the Holy Spirit teaches to us and to leave behind a great legendary impact in this church age so that the believers can know and understand the truth of Bible doctrine. 
their calling to be in the polity of religion, their work as Lord calls to them to be in this church, their teachings as Lord designates them to be as pure, as true, as correct. But we the believers are not aware of these things. We are not even considered to look that the high calling of our profession in our Lord being the high priest has executed those things which are no longer to be considered for us to be as painful. He has really endured them. But we the believers are not able to understand how much great privilege our Lord has done upon our lives. At least those elders during John chapter 8 realized their sin when their conscience was being probed and they left and went. Today the pastor teachers are not taking to their heart what exactly is the sin of not rightly dividing the word of the Lord. You need to be very cautious, dear brethren, about these things. The life that we are going through is of a so important one. It will definitely take. And we are here to pay a huge price if you are really not able to execute the protocol plan of God. And if you are not really here to learn the wisdom of Christ. To him alone belongs all the dunamis, inheritability, all the riches, plausias. To him alone belongs all the wisdom, sophia. To him alone belongs the iskun, the authority which he has to give to us. And we acquire it in a day by day process. A faithful man, as Timothy was being told, commit this to them who are faithful men who are able to teach, didasco church has been designed for a day-by-day -day process of learning the word of the Lord and the pastor teacher teaches. That's why the designation for him is a PT. But today they have changed the true meaning of this and they have made that which is not at all right, perfect and correct. And it is of a great pain for us to tell to you all these things. It is not of a great joy that we are telling to you, dear brother. It is of a great pain. Now faithful men to handle the word of the Lord accurately. And they are leading upon those things which is not at all worthy to be thought of. And they are considered upon those things which are not at all worthy to be made known. It is of a real great pain for you all to tell those things, dear brother. Therefore, consider over these things. I a short discourse. You need to know, you need to learn. But we are here not to squench the spirit pulse the spirit, nor grip the spirit. While Apostle Paul was writing the first Thessalonians, he says, squelch not. And in his writing Ephesians 4.30, he says, grieve not. Either of the two, if you are doing, you are not living glory to God. You are living unglory to my God. So consider over these things as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the momentary truth, of this eternal truth. This eternal truth is for you for very simple believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Rather, for the believer, the great matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to possess of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest humanity is to carry so on Lagan, her out of body, season or out of season. Because of the diamond from my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. Number one diamond from my witnesses, still in Trinity, for out of the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from witnesses, for hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what we need to do, we need to accurately handle the word of the Lord enough and never to worry about the softies. If you are worrying about the softies, you have lost the battle. Softies about the ecclesiastical displeasure. Softies about your money that will be cut off. Softies about the fellow man ostracism. But rather we need to stay in a simple cottage and to eat menial food and to be loyal to God rather than staying in a royal mansion and eating royal food without Christ in it. This journey is of a short time, not for a long time. 